right here we are dealing with a system of a differential equations. Now this is a first order linear setup. We have x dot, we have a matrix here, and then we have multiplied by x on the end. Just a little heads up, this will be the case where we're going to be trying to find eigenvalues and we're going to end up finding three that are exactly the same. Therefore, we're going to have a multiplicity of three. Just a quick heads up on where eigenvalues and eigenvectors come from. Here's their formula and this is this one just rearranged. So first step, let's go ahead and find our eigenvalues. So here we can see this is our matrix A from here and then diagonally minus lambda minus lambda minus lambda equals a zero. Now I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit so we can see a little bit better what's happening. Now we can find this with the software also the uh, three eigenvalues uh, from here but uh, let's just do it by hand see uh, real quick go over it. So I'm gonna take row one add it to row three and write it in the place of row one. That's what you can see here. From here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna expand this based on uh, the first row. So 1 minus lambda times the determinant what's left. If you cross this and this out you have this right here. Then minus 0 cross this out this out the determinant of what would be here and here but 0 so don't worry about it. Plus 1 minus lambda times the determinant of if you cross this and this out what you have left right here. That's what we can see here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and since this and this repeats I'm gonna factor it out and here it is 1 minus lambda times whatever was left in in the parentheses is these two determinants. Now actually solve the two determinants this one and this one. This one comes right here this one right here it's fairly easy. It's this times this minus this times this, right? For both of them. Now let's go ahead and simplify. And we can see that we're going to have 1 minus lambda in parentheses times lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1. Now from these we can find the roots real easily and those will be our three eigenvalues. From here we have lambda 1 is 1 and from here we're going to have 2 which is uh, lambda 2 equals 1, lambda 3 equals 1. Now, this is what I was talking about up here, that we're going to have eigenvalues with multiplicity of 3. We have one eigenvalue, which is just 1, but it's actually a multi with a multiplicity of 3, so it appears 3 times. Now that we have the 3 eigenvalues, we can go ahead and start working on our eigenvectors. Now, lambda 1, 2, 3, they are all equal to 1. So let's go ahead and plug in into our equations. So we're going to take our a minus the lambda that we're working with, which is 1 for all three of them, so minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Now here a, b, c, just three variables equals to the zero vector, right? So 0, 0, 0. This we can go ahead and break it up and make three equations out of them. From this line times this with this, this with this, with this. The regular multiplication of matrices. Now we have these three equations. Now if you can't catch it right away, go ahead and solve it, but sooner or later you will find out that these are not independent because the second and the third they are just simply scaled versions of the first equation. Therefore we can ignore these two and let's just work with the first one. I'm gonna rewrite it right here. 4a minus 3b minus 2c equals 0 and from here I'm gonna solve 4a. Now after this we know that any eigenvector for this setup we'll have the form of right here v vector equals 
what we found right here. I'm going to plug in to instead of A, so A, B and C, they are arbitrary, so just put B and C. Now, this one we can also write up by factoring B and C out, and then we're going to have B and this vector. B appears in this one three fourths, so you put it there. Here it appears once, you put it there. Here it doesn't appear at all, so you put a zero. Same thing we do for C. It appears one half here, it doesn't appear here, so zero. And for C here, you put a one. Now, just to make our life easier, so we don't have to write uh, fractions, we can go ahead and do this, where we're gonna call B equals 4B1 and C equals 2C1. Now this will allow us to rewrite these guys down here, where B1, we're going to have a nice vector of 3, 4, and 0, and C1, 1, 0, oh, 2, okay? And now, with any values for B1 and C1, these are the eigenvectors that we have found, and this will be my first eigenvector, 3, 4, 0, and my second eigenvector, half, 0, and 1. Now, if you notice, we have three eigenvalues here, lambda 1, 2, 3 equals 1, but we have only two eigenvectors. Now, this means that we still need to find one more eigenvector. The three, excuse me, the third eigenvector will be a generalized eigenvector of this uh, differential equation that we are working with. And I'm going to go ahead and call it a Q right there. And its components, just randomly, I'm going to pick some letters, M, P, and R. Now to find it, its actual values, let's go ahead and write up our matrix times the eigenvector will give us equal to now, what will be equal to? We're gonna see this eta 1, I'm gonna call it, we can call it whatever, but it will be a vector that we don't really know at this point. And this will be a tricky part that we need to determine. This eta 1 needs to be a linear combination of the other two eigenvectors that we have found, the v1 and v2. So we write that up as alpha v1 plus beta v2 and equals to, you see k, 2k and minus k here, but what, where did those come from, right? Now, whatever we put here, it needs to be representative of the differential equation, how it uh, looks more accurately of this. So we know that the last two equations are multiple of the first one, right? Now, this is 2 times this, and this one is minus or negative this. Now, this is exactly what we're going to use here. So we can call the first equation something, k, f, g, whatever you like, I'm going to call it k, but these two, they need to follow in the same rhythm like these follow this guy, okay? So this is k, this will be 2k, just like this is 2 times this, and this is minus k, just like this is minus of this, okay? So that's how we set this up. Now using this, let's go ahead and write up our equations that come from these. 3 alpha plus 1 beta equals k, Here's the other two equations, which will be 4 alpha plus 0 beta equals 2k. And the third one, 0 alpha plus 2 beta equals negative k. Solve these and you can find that beta is minus k over 2, alpha is k over 2. Now remember, k is just any number, whatever number. And from these two, if we equate it, we can see that beta is simply equal to negative alpha. Now I'm going to take this and plug it back into this one so I can find my k's. And there it is, alpha times 3, 4, 0, same way, like up here, no difference. This one plus 
Now, instead of beta, I'm going to plug this in, which is negative alpha. The vector stage on, stays unchanged, 102. And equal to, now here, what is k? k, we can solve it from this guy right here. k equals to 2 alpha, right? So that's what I'm going to use and start plugging it in here. I'm going to factor out alpha, so alpha times 2, 4, and minus 2. Now the multiplier in the front, we can just drop it, it doesn't matter. And we're going to choose it as alpha equals 1. Now we have this vector, eta 1, what we've been looking for right here, will be 2, 4, and negative 2. Since I know this guy now, I can come back here, plug it in, and write up my equation filled out. I know the components of Q, M, P, and R, so plug them in. I know the components of eta1, so plug them in. Now we are in the same situation like in the beginning. These two lines, the row number 2 and row number 3, are multiples of row number one, right? So we can just uh, leave them be and work with the first equation. And I'm gonna rewrite it right here. 4m minus 3p minus 2r equals two. Solve for m, it's right here. Then I can go ahead and write my equation as you see it here. So q vector, my third eigenvector, that we're gonna, we are working on, right, will be what I found right here. Plug it in in place of M. P and R, again, just arbitrary, so we're just going to put P, we're going to put R, and break it up. Factor out the P, here's my vector. Factor out R, here's my other vector. And plus what we have here, just one half and zero, zero. Now, we need to notice that these were our original two eigenvectors that we found, v1 and v2. Now, the rule is that we can always remove a multiple of a regular eigenvector out of the generalized eigenvectors setup. So this is my generalized eigenvector setup right here. But we can notice that this is my original v1 and v2. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and ignore these two. And I'm going to work only with this part. So I'm going to rename this as q1. And I'm going to use only the useful part, which is 1 half 0, 0. Finally, we have figured out everything that we need so we can write up our solution. Here's the formula for it. This one comes from the first eigenvector that we have found. This is from the second one, and this is from the third one. Now let's go ahead and plug everything in. And here it is, C1, my V1 vector that we have found, 3, 4, and 0. E, lambda is 1, so E to the T, plus C2, my V2, which is 1, 0, 2. E to the lambda 2 is again just 1, so E to the T, and C3 times this, what we have inside, my Q1, what we have found here, plus my eta1, which was 2, 4, negative 2, times 2, and parentheses closed, times e to lambda 3 is 1, so e to the t again. Now, we can also break uh, these out, my x1, my x2, and x3, if you would like to write them one by one. This is beneficial if you have a IVP given, initial value problem. It is easier to see your component. So just as an example, what would it be if I would be uh, given an initial value problem? Let's say that x0 equals 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is the vector that is given. So I'm just going to take these three, x1, x2, x3. Here it is. Simply plug a zero into everywhere where we see a t. Put it equal to x1 will be equal to 1 right here. x2 will be equal to 2, the middle one. And the third x3 
will be equal to the third, which is 3. Let's go ahead and simplify it. And there it is. 3 equations and 3 unknowns. Let's go ahead and find one. Find them. Fairly simple. C1 will be 1 half. C2 will be 3 over 2. And C3 will be negative 4. Now we can go back to our solution and replace C1, C2, C3 with the values that we have found. And here's our final version with the constants found and plugged in. And there you have it. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you give a thumbs up to the video so other people can also find it. And have a good day.